Welcome to yet another episode of The Speaking Citizen. I am Mehru Jafar. At The Speaking Citizen, we talk to people who introduce aesthetics to life, like writers, poets, painters, and history and heritage lovers. In the ongoing series today, we have Ishan Sharma, a student of history. Ishan is the founder of Caravan, the Heritage Exploration Initiative. The initiative started as a heritage walk for students, for them to get a feel for places they had only read about in history books and to try to bring alive the past, perhaps as a lesson for the present. Then pandemic struck, bringing to halt all outdoor activities. During the long anxious days of the lockdown, Karwan indulged viewers with video talks by historians from around the world, making numerous people sitting at home fall in love with history and with heritage. The way Ishan's Karwan has blossomed today, it brings to mind the words of Urdu poet Majru Sultanpuri. Main akela hi chala tha. जाने मंजिल मगर मैं अकेला ही चला था जाने मंजिल मगर लोग साथ आते गए और कारवां बनता गया बहुत बहुत मुबारक ईशान frankly speaking i have never met a 21 year old like ईशान शर्मा i wonder if you have i was not like ईशान when i was 21 years old i was airy in the head living in the clouds and swarmed with doubts tell me ishan this is my first question to you how are you so together at the ripe old age of 21 years you are so sure and so focused why are you not at this minute in a discotheque what are you doing sitting here talking history talking of the past with an old fogey like me tell me Thank you so much, Mehru, ma'am, for this opportunity for inviting me. I followed the last two episodes of the series with uh, Rakshanda and the other speaker who was part of the progressive who was part started the progressive movement in in London and and the both these conversations were very insightful. Thank you so much for the citizen also for hosting such a great range of conversations. Uh, I think <laughs> it is because I I. lived with my grandfather and my grandmother and my my dada ji was a big history lover he he loved cinema and with him i discovered a lot of gems of gurudev of dilip kumar of raj kapoor so i think that's where it's all started and i i do all partying and everything apart from history but yeah history takes a lot of time of my routine but yeah i think uh I I would give that credit to my grandparents only for uh, for giving me an aim maybe or a direction at a very early age, and that's what I followed. And I don't know if I am focused or not, but I try to be as calm as possible. The focused, yes, because you have been uh, consistently so constantly. uh you know uh, continuing with the talks you know which have enriched us so much by bringing together into our uh, our uh, home you know famous historians uh, introducing to us you know uh, historians from around the world and this is very very precious you know so i have to personally thank you and i'm sure a lot of people are very pleased to be introduced to history through uh, uh, caravan thank you so the next question i want to know is the importance in your view of knowing our past not only for students but for all citizen for all of us why do you think it's so important to know where we come from and uh, what life was like uh, before we were born particularly today when we seem to be playing around with our shared collective past 
yeah i think the there is a very famous quote on history that the history that a historian studies is not a dead past it is a well living history kind of thing it, it it is surrounded uh, uh, right in front of us it, it's it's there it's in front of us we are living in the past in a way and whatever today we see is a product of the past it is something that happened in in distant past that is giving that showing result in the present so past always overshadows the present in my sense and to understand the present situations be it political be it societal be it anything the the main thing is to go back in the past and see from where it originated and that is how you can make sense of the present but uh, there are perspectives and perspectives as uh, you must know so how do we uh, how do we come to terms you know with the different way different scholars uh, look at the past so with history writing in india the western concept of history because history as as a term also differs from centuries to century what we understand as history now was not there in the past but the britishers wrote history for a james mill was the first person who wrote uh, history of british india who, which divided india into three parts hindu muslim and christian then the nationalist schemes they wrote about glorifying ancient india as as response to the british imperialist writers and then came the marxist historians who talked about the economics and 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 societal change then the subaltern that i think the subaltern school ended in 2008 but that also played a big role so these perspectives because history we can't reconstruct the exact past because we do not know how that was we can only reconstruct it through evidences and evidences are based on interpretations and interpretations may differ so i think that is why we have so many different interpretations of histories of the same event a historian would say something and a b historian would say something else and that reminds me of a very beautiful share in urdu which goes like chaman mein ek talate rang bo se baat banti hai hum hi hum hai to kya hum hai tum hi tum ho to kya tum ho so yeah. that i think applies on history as well but how how do we uh, as a society as a civilization as civilized uh, uh, teachers and students of history how do we prevent ourselves from uh, 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 from not name calling from respecting the other uh, uh, historians point of view at the moment you know uh, there is uh, uh, the leftist point of history and the writers point of history and the, and and maybe you know there are other groups that are ready to uh, kill each other you know over um, over their point of view so how do we make academics and knowledge um, benefit us and not make uh, us uh, you know so ferocious that we are unable to respect uh, the others point of view yeah yes i think uh, nowadays due to polarization of various kinds people have become very uh, maybe not physically violent but but they are violent in some senses of it but i think reading more and more would help because reading expands your horizon of your mind it opens up your mind and when you are acceptable of various ideas i think you become more uh, aware and history is all about being aware of the past so uh, is par bhi ek ek bahut achhi urdu shayari hai i think it is of javed akhtar ki uh, ki badi ronak thi is ghar mein ye ghar aisa nahi tha gile shikwe bhi rehte the magar aisa nahi tha कुछ हीरी बातें थी कुछ तल्ख बातें थी मगर उन तल्ख बातों का असर ऐसा नहीं था क्या बात? 
I think we have to reinstate that belief now. So uh, all of us, all of us uh, in as students of uh, history, especially in school where history was not the main subject, but all of us recall our history lessons as uh, drab and boring and, and uh, classes that we were not very enthusiastic about uh, attending. So how do you think now that you you're so much in love with history and you're working uh, uh, with uh, history books and you almost made it your profession. What do you say? How can history lessons be made more attractive and relevant to the life of uh, uh, each student? History as a discipline is very interesting because it is ever evolving. We think history past to be very stationary ki yehi hua ta it is that happened and it is uh, it it can't be changed or something but history changes with every evidence every new evidence with every new interpretation our understanding of the past changes so we must make students aware of this beautiful dynamics of the past that history is not just about the dates when uh, battle of chittor was fought or when akbar was thrown as the king of Basha of India, Hindustan. I think we have to move past beyond that. And we must also show cinematic history is a beautiful part of our discipline. How cinema made a big impact on society when it came in 1930s. How that helped in the freedom struggle. How Gandhi watched just one film in his life that was Ram Rajya. And he slept in between. That's a different story. But these are parts of history, snippets of the past that might interest students. And I remember my introduction to history was not through classrooms because classrooms are always very boring, unfortunately. But mine was a lecture by a historian, an archaeologist who came to IIT long back. His name was Michel Danino. So he gave a, pro I, I might disagree with much of what he says about in this now, but I was in class fifth when I listened to his talk and I was mesmerized to see the extent of Indus Valley civilization, the influence of the Indus Valley, or what we call the Bronze Age civilization. So I think these are the concepts that might attract students, these interactive uh, way of teaching pedagogy. We, we must change uh, the way we teach history, the way we approach history, actually. So you, you just mentioned how uh, you fell more in love with history because you saw a film on the Indus Valley civilization. So what, what is your opinion? How do you think cinema today is portraying history uh, on the silver screen? Cinema, uh, I don't see any history films now, unfortunately. They might call it historical. Uh, there are some coming up this year, maybe Mr. Kumar's films or some, some films. There are historical inequities, most of them, but uh, history shows that cinema has always been a medium of propaganda, uh, you know, of, of like Nazi Germany had films made to showcase their propaganda. USSR at some point had films as a propaganda tool. So history through cinema uh, is, is a difficult uh, approach, but I think we had some good films also. Don't take history which is shown in cinema as, as on face value. Read books, that's, that's the only way you can know history. You can always watch cinema for entertainment uh, sake, for say, uh, like I like Jodha Akbar, Ashutosh Gowalika's Jodha Akbar. It has so many inequities in it, but I like it for its aesthetics. I like Mughal Azam, the poster is right behind me. It has its own, and Mughal Azam, as you might know, is not a historical story. It's a fiction by Taj Muhammad. It's, it's a novel, and Anarkali was not a real character. So I think that's how history uh, in cinema is shown. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, it's, a, it's a mix and match, maybe. I think, are you trying to say, that good films, though historically not uh, uh, true, like Mukhle Azam and Jodha Akbar, they entertain you and by entertaining you maybe arouse 
the interest of the viewer in history and then you go back and do your own research and and uh, find out uh, uh, exactly if anarkali was a historical figure or not are you trying to say that in in a way but also there is a difference between commercial cinema and art cinema Uh, people don't call it art now or parallel now but there is a difference i might consider sahid akhtar mirza films as historical those were made in 1970s about mill workers about situation of people after the bhivandi riots and others that shows the society of that time and for me that would be historical rather than watching uh, a film on rani lakshmi bai on whom many literature many books has already been written they are out in the market people can read those books by historians especially rudrangsh mukherjee recently wrote a book called a begum and rani that people can read rather than watching a film of course it might be very uh, glamorous with all the beautiful jewelry sets big cinema a big big set but uh, to to know the past authentic past maybe you must consult a historian then a filmmaker yeah of course but uh, i think we have to is it we ourselves who have to groom ourselves to be able to uh, enjoy a, a historical film as entertainment and then uh, enjoy a good book on the actual history of that incident i think this is a responsibility that we have to ourselves i think yeah yeah i think there are good films on history as well uh, all the documentaries uh, that are there on uh, the nfdc website or national archives youtube channel has so many documentaries the, the film division of india have yeah. so many documentaries from 1960s 50s showing the culture of india people should watch them i think those are better than commercial cinema and uh, yeah we must make a choice that yeah how should we learn history from somebody who is making film for money which is commercial cinema or a historian who has devoted their life into research exactly and w- what is your opinion of uh, blockbusters like ben hur roots uh uh you know some fabulous uh, um hollywood films on siriana i think linkedin you know, also yeah yes i they they are most entertaining but do you think um, uh they distort history or they quite nice actually yeah no i see when i watch cinema i see it as an audience just for for its craft craft of a of a filmmaker how he showcases a scene how what's the lighting like was the camera angle uh, how are the dialogues how's the aesthetics i think that are more interesting than seeing historical value of the cinema exactly uh, yeah and believing it in toto so if we can't tra- trust cinema with history um uh, we can i mean we can't trust some books either you know uh, with history so how would you describe a fine teacher of history would you like to name some uh, historians or teachers who have put you on the right path as far as uh, history is concerned and uh, historian teachers of history who you feel are precious uh, for uh, for tell, talking to us about our past as objectively as possible and need to be introduced to uh, those interested in history today i think uh, yeah that's a big question of what to read and whom to read yeah. because people have their own uh, preoccupations about historians that he's left he's right we won't read them but i think without reading them on just hearsays we can't believe on something uh for me a good history book is by a person who can question the existing knowledge and question the preoccupations about the past because to to develop we must question the existing beliefs of society 
and if somebody is doing it logically providing evidence providing reasonable argument uh to an to an event to their interpretation of the past i think that is much interesting than reading a fact book on history like there are many coffee table books that people can read just to go, know the chronology of events so i think uh, i would rather go for a historical argument than such chronological books and i have read many many writers uh, be it professor romila thapar whose book uh, most interesting book is our past as present i think that's the book name past as present is a book that talks about how history was written in the british times and then how people perceive the past how we see the past and how shows like ramayan and mahabharat which were aired in on doordarshan played a big role in public memory because yes. public memory plays a big role all this cinema that we are talking about impact yes. the public memory so i think her books are really nice i really admire e h car edward harlet car uh, who has written a book called what is history and i always recommend people to read what is history by e h car as the basic book to understand the discipline of history and if you want to understand how a historian works yeah, you have to read mark block the father of annals school of history which is the french uh, history school so i think those are people who who are national treasures international treasures of our discipline people like rs sharma for instance or harbans mukhya or or say even rc majumdar a national historian who is called the father of indian historiography rg bhandarkar who after whom the bhandarkar oriental institute in pune is named then patrick olivel who is a translator sanskrit translator sheldon pollock there are so many people who write such fan, fascinating stuff that we really love to read even wendy doniger for instance writes very well that yeah. people must read if they 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 can disagree agree with any historian they want but at least they must read now well, i'm sure all these names which you've given you know uh, eyes closed and a list of names uh, of historians who you trust and because um, uh people trust your opinion i'm sure uh, this list will be very useful to two people interested in history and especially to uh, students even younger than you ishan yes so uh, your other love which we just discovered is cinema of course uh, but also poetry so what role uh, can these two powerful mediums of communication play today in making society which is a little bit confused and chaotic around us at the moment a little more sane you know we seem to be as a society losing some of our sanity so what role does poetry and cinema play in uh, in uh, bringing back the equilibrium uh, within individuals and within a society i think it is a historical process every society goes through ups and downs throughout their journey and it's very natural i think and we'll we'll see better times in in times to come uh, but uh, poetry has always acted as a form of resistance over centuries we it we uh, the poets that like nayanars or alvars in the in, in in early medieval centuries who wrote against the brahmanical norms many a times or be it uh, the uh, poets of rebellious years of 1920s be it dinkar who wrote sadiyon se bhuji hui aag usko bhuga uthi aur singhasan khali karo ki janta aati hai so i think these these poets and these poetries played a big role in in creating a national consciousness maybe or a societal consciousness that overthrew the britishers uh, or or any oppressive uh, power and this also kind of creates or shapes our society in a better way cinema played a big role in the freedom struggle be it uh, a film called anandamath 
which came out in uh, 19 early 1940s there was a film called hindustan ki kasam which had a song called uh, i i didn't remember the song but that was a song by uh, kavi pradeep uh, which was not banned by the britishers because uh, world war 2 was going on it was an anti british song uh but because of world war 2 they couldn't censor it they were busy fighting the japanese so that's how that song you, remained do you remember uh, any bit of that song uh it was called uh i'll have to check actually yeah. just a moment maybe they'll edit it yeah so uh, but what about you know you're correct that you know uh, we have to go through a lot of ups and downs in in life but how does the citizen deal with the tragedy that takes place in between the chaotic state in society and you know the karma stage which follows invariably follows even though it can take decades and sometimes centuries so but in between uh, the confusion the confusion causes so many sad things you know in our case lynching or uh, troubling of uh, ordinary citizens how do we as a citizen uh, go to bed without thinking of uh, you know the sad things happening around us <laughs> for that i think we must ask a political scientist because i i i don't know it 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 bothers all of us and there is no answer that one can give uh, rather than just wait uh, to the, for the storm to pass maybe but there are good things that give us respite uh, despite this whatever goes in in society in the world there is history that books that we read there are so many good books that i invest a lot of time in i do not watch news unfortunately i i do not read newspapers for the last one and a half year i do not know what goes on in in i just follow a, a little bit through twitter but that that's all so i read a lot i i listen to old music of uh, my my favorite remains uh, talat mahmood and kl sehgal kl sehgal was way before my grandfather even so uh, those are the things that that keeps you uh, motivated maybe inspired and, yeah yeah and when you read books you kind of get new ideas and i i remember romila thapar's book on on history it was i think it was uh, our past as present where she mentioned that how the society was in 1947 when india got independence what were the aspirations of young india at that time i think we also have some aspirations of our, for our generation and let's see when that materializes when we'll have a we'll have employment for all we'll have education for all we'll have no poverty no inflation uh, not that high inflation uh, so we all have some dreams for our nation of course so uh, ishan uh, to happier uh, uh, to a happier topic you feel like uh, quoting a favorite poet of yours and give the name or names of a few favorite films my favorite film remains uh, mughal azam first then uh, i recently watched a film called uh, what was that name uh, there's also a fun film called professor of shami kapoor that i really love it's, it's a comedy film and i love shami kapoor as an as a dancer not as an actor but uh, yeah that an 1946 48 maybe an of dilip kumar and then there is shri char so beast of course any raj kapoor films are yeah. filled with socialist ideas and of nehruvian idea of india then there's of recent times i i watched and i enjoyed rrr a telugu film i believe but again uh, there are some okay elements in that also which we can ignore but lastly the film is very nice 
of poets i would say ramdhari singh dinkar harivansh rai bachchan even atal bihari vaj some of atal bihari vajpayee poetry i really like this of his pure shuddha hindi i often read him uh, i don't read some of his poetry but largely i read my grandparents uh, poetry my both my grandfathers used to write so i i read them sometimes from their diaries so yeah my my favorite actors remain dilip kumar and uh, madhubala lovely yes lovely so to end this wonderful conversation which of course i do not want to end but we must why is all the interesting information about our shared past called his story do you have any clue about what her story is about yeah so i think uh, as i said in between the conversation also that the understanding of the past changes so when history was written when we live in a patriarchal world be it or not we women always remains a secondary kind of a citizen but i think the time is changing we are seeing lot of feminist writings wonderful feminist writing with nivedita menon or uma chakravarti or ruby lal's book on noor jahan uh, called the empress ira mukherjee's book Uh, both the books called daughters of the sun and then a book on draupadi which came out songs of draupadi which came out last year i think these are some ray of hopes that her story would be told in coming future because we really need a uh, history of women to come forward because women played a big role in part of our past court history wrote about the rulers and the ruled but in that also women kind of was kind of missing and many mughal historians reconstruct the history of women through paintings if you see so yeah. i think uh, that that aspect of society the most important member of the society women must be given their platform and not just women also dalits also queers lgbtqi plus community all these diversities and i think that would make history even more better uh, not just a singular tone of history which is the main uh, tone but also other voices too must be heard and i think we'll have many more writers who will come up with great stories from from the past of these various voices but thank you so much that's such a high note to end this uh, talk this conversation and i'm already imagining um, history being the the word history becoming his her story in the future so thank you thank you ishan for uh, for all your answers this was a lovely conversation and uh, it's always lovely lovely talking to you thank you so much ma'am